I remember when I first started work and I was trying to navigate the code base. And you know, you'd sit there thinking, hmm, how do I get to the class that I need to? And after scrolling through the Solution Explorer for a while, eventually I'd cave and ask one of my colleagues. They'd scoot over to my desk and push like five different keys rapidly and they'd suddenly be in the place that I was looking for. This would frustrate me a lot because even as I got better, every time I thought I'd got more efficient at getting a task done, somebody would come over and push a couple of buttons and suddenly a function would appear out of nowhere with all the parameters that it needs and all of the information inside of it. So I actually installed a key logger on my PC that would highlight the keys pressed at the top right corner. These were nothing fancy, you know, F12 to inspect into an object and maybe control comma to open up files and then I'd start typing and hit enter and you'd only need the first three letters to get roughly where you were going. But it's also the bottom of the mountain because sometimes you'll come across people like this. So you can see at the bottom right here, this guy's uh, key presses. You might be able to work out what he's doing if you look at the white box that's flying about. There's so much potential you can unlock just by actually learning the tools available for you for productivity. So I want to show you the best bang for your buck things that I've implemented that have made me a faster software engineer. So in this video we'll go over the thought pattern that will skyrocket your productivity, the band-aid you have to rip off to unlock it, and how you can be efficient outside of your IDE, not just within it. So I feel like a lot of people can get away with never really learning the shortcuts of their IDE. You're probably tempted by these nice buttons everywhere, but every time you want to commit something you need to go to the Git window. You need to use their built-in system, which is cool, but I mean, you probably do this task a lot. So there's probably a quicker way that we can get around. Every time that you think, hmm, right, I need to I need to debug this and I go and find I go and find the debug button. Maybe you're in a monolithic architecture and there's like 20 different projects that you have to scroll through to work out what you're trying to debug. Where well, my IDE, I just hit space D for debug, and then I would type the first couple of letters and hit enter, and it's it's there, it's done because I do it all the time, I've got my own shortcut for it. I know it off the top of my head because it's what I do 9 to 5. You want there to be as little friction as possible. You know, there's a reason that every time you Google Steve Jobs, he's wearing the same thing. It's because he believed in this problem of having as little friction in his life as possible to the point that he had a cartoon character's wardrobe and it was all the same clothes. And so there was no friction. He didn't have to stop and think, hmm, what am I going to wear today? He just threw on his clothes. You don't want to be that guy who goes his entire life without realizing that you can have multi-cursor support in VS Code, that you probably have multi-cursor support in your IDE. You're probably going through... <laughs> going through line by line instead of doing it all at once, especially when there's indentation. But I'm not going to tell you to go away and learn all the shortcuts, because actually I think there's a better standardized way of doing that that is in pretty much every IDE. I use Rider at work, and there's this plugin. It's definitely in VS Code. It's also in Visual Studio. Go to your extension manager and download your Vim plugin for whatever IDE you use. Now you'll probably come across Vim zealots that say, ah, oh, this, is, this is sacrilege. You should just be using NeoVim. Why would you use it inside? I'd say that's too much of a jump. It's a good idea, but realistically, it's probably going to be too much of a learning curve, especially if you're doing this full time for work. The learning is going to take it out of you. But if you download this, you're going to be immediately forced to think in terms of efficiency. So you can see my mouse is over to the right here and my cursor to the left, the red uh, square jumping about. That's me in Vim normal mode. Now, this video is not going to be a tutorial on how to get started with Vim because there's countless of those on YouTube. I'm just going to explain to you why you should do this. First of all, you're not going to be able to type until you learn the basic because you have to know the difference between being in this thin line mode versus in this blocky line mode. Because if you try and start typing like this, you're going to start deleting stuff by accident, which is good because it's easy to have a toolkit that you install, but you never actually use. I want you to throw yourself in the deep end. I want the trial by fire, you need to learn. Spend your first couple of weeks just getting used to actually navigating around without a mouse because it's it's gonna feel unfamiliar using control D to do half page down, control U to go half a page up, shift V to select a line, D to delete it, U to undo it, using W to jump between words. Say I wanted to select between the brackets there, I can select between it with VIB. Say I wanted to start typing and replace it, I could press C and start typing. But this is just scratching the surface. These are the basics. You've taken your stabilizers off and you're actually riding the bike. You don't want to be that adult that a month into learning to cycle is still using stabilizers. <laughs> what you can do is you can start to personalize what buttons do what. It's encouraged. It's encouraged to use just single keys. We're not looking for control C, control V. We're looking for pushing buttons in an order to do familiar things. Maybe you dip your toes in, maybe space G for git would open up the git window and immediately let you start typing into the commit. Maybe you frequently have to clean and rebuild. If you can go online, you can normally find people that have already created customizations for your idea. This is what I use for Rider. This is where I started. 
I watched the Primogen's complete series on how to use Vim as your editor, and instead of following the steps inside of Vim like he did, I did it inside of Rider with the plugin. And, it, and this was pretty good actually, because he said, look, try this for a couple of days, then come back, do the next one. And over the course of about a couple of weeks, I got the hang of it. But I'm still learning now. I mean, there's always, there's always more that you can optimize and make more efficient. Sure, at the beginning, I spent a lot of time learning, but the time I've now saved doing those rusted things that... <laughs> that manually might have taken you hours with Vim, you can do in minutes, especially once you start getting into things like macros. I remember watching this guy, Luke Smith, <laughs> who kind of inspired me to start actually thinking in terms of macros, because I think in this video, let's see what Now you'll notice it's saying recording at double capital I goes to the beginning of the line and puts me in insert mode. I'm gonna type file, uh, space, and open our quotes. Now I press escape to get in normal mode. Uh, I'm gonna press capital A, so that moves me to the end. Now quote, now I'm gonna press enter, and I'm gonna type duration, and I'll say five. Now all of those key presses are saved to at W. Now in order to call that macro, all you have to do is press at capital two and W. Uh, so at W, at W, very nice. Uh, now these macros can be called uh, iteratively. So let's say I wanna do that 50 times. I just press five zero and then at W. Now it's repeated 50 times, I've gone through 50 more. Hopefully that gives you some sort of idea of the stuff that you can start doing. You've probably had to format some horribly unformatted text before to get to fit into a JSON. This is fantastic for that kind of stuff. It doesn't just end in your IDE. There's Vim plugins for so much. I mean, uh, Obsidian, the note, the note taking app that I mentioned in my last video. This guy's got Vim in his browser and admittedly I use this as well. It helps me navigate DevOps quickly. Different tab. I'm going to go with capital F to, uh, to open a new tab. Um, and essentially you can- And all of the key bindings are gonna be familiar because it's exactly the same as what you're using in your IDE. It's the same as what you're using in your note-taking app. It's everywhere. And that's why I'd say, learn the plugin. The amount of apps that you use that probably have the capacity for speeding up their usage if you know you've been motion. Well, the sky's the limit. So hopefully this gets you on the path of optimizing your workflow. I've tried to keep it generic because if I get too specific, it probably won't apply to you. There's so much variance. The point is, is you just need to start thinking, hmm, is, this, is there a way I could do this faster? And the chances are, once you start picking up something like Vim, you're gonna realize how slow you've been doing everything. And the next time you sit down at somebody's computer, you're gonna be the guy where they're gonna install the keylogger so they can keep up. Now the risk of becoming this productive is maybe you'll run into burnout. So I've got this video here, where I cover the mechanisms I use to work as much as I do without really running into that problem. I hope that video helps. Cheers guys.